The following is a presentation of Play Fly Sports Properties and Michigan State Sports Properties. You know, look, the Big Ten, man, I mean, it's a long way away from the days of 10, but, you know, we're at 14, headed to 16. That's got to be all we can do. Or is it? There's a lot to talk about regarding conference expansions. We got a jam-packed show. It is Thursday, May 25th, 2023. I'm your host, Jason Strayhorn, along with my co-host, Otis Wiley, and J.U., Choo Choo Culcrick, this is Sparta. Welcome to the show. If this is your first time, join the live chat. Ask where the party's at. Let us know where you're watching from. We'll give you a shout out. And look, don't forget to follow us on all of our social media platforms. And this is how to do that. Thanks for tuning in to This is Sparta MSU. Interested in hearing more from us? Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and even TikTok. Click on the link in the bio to head to our link tree for more information. Help us grow our following by hitting the like and subscribe buttons. Tell your friends and family to do the same. Have an idea for a future episode? Let us know in the comment section below. And now, back to the show. Oh, great day, fellas. What's going on, Chu? Talk to me. Before we go, I know Otis is like, what's he going to (laughs) say? That's the beauty of not scripted here. (laughs) <laughs> let's let's let, let, let's get some more juice in this here, right? This is the episode seventy nine. This is the Strayhorn Show. Oh, come on, man! <laughs> come on, man! He like, he like, oh yeah, talk to yeah, him nice. Talk to him nice, yeah, man. Talk you know, to him this, nice. Is, this is Big Stray's number here. Seventy nine. Hey, it's a blessing, right? You know, seventy nine. I mean, well, I, we, we could have been where were we? Twenty one. We had to hit that first, and then we hit that thirty piece, right? Yeah. And now we up here to 79. There, there, was some, I mean, there, was some good, there was some good ones wore that number 79. Yeah, there was yeah, very good in, ones, man. You in know, our time it was Jesse Miller, you know, Stray, you don that, you know, Tony Mandrich. You know, hey, we, we had some dogs wear that number 79. Absolutely, man. I mean that it, who's wearing I, it now? Yeah, you know, I love the 79. I don't, you know, you know, I don't know who's gonna have it next year, you know. Because hey. Jared Horse had it before. Horse is now. <laughs> you didn't claim him. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I'm saying that he's moving on. He was the number one pick of your Michigan Panthers, by the way. You know, Jared Horse, <laughs> number seventy nine. But to me, Tony Mandridge, man, that's the reason I wore it. Watching him, I was, that's really all I knew about Michigan State as a youngster was watching that guy and what he did. Now, it, you know, people want to talk about you know how he got there, but I don't. Hey, listen, you still gotta, you know do the work, you know, and get out there and play how he plays. One of the most dominant players in college football history. Uh, that That's re- really why I like emulated, like, you know, I, I like that image somewhat. I just like yeah. the aggressive part. You know yeah, what I mean? Don't you, don't, don't you hate, like, like, I know we all, we all play, we all sit back and look back and uh, like when someone sorry gets your number, don't you mean? <laughs> <laughs> like real, real talk here. Someone's sorry <laughs> gets your number, and uh, you like that. That's what I'm saying. It is a club, bro. It is a true, it's a true club yeah. with a number. Like, yeah. it's a, I gotta give the a torch. I gotta give a shout out, though. Like, talk about ultimate sound of respect, Riley Bola. So, when I left, the first person to wear number 30 was Riley Bola, and he reached out. He was like, Yo, is it cool if I wear 30? I was like, Hell yeah, you can wear 30. You right, you falling. And that's the one that moved him to running back and everything like that. But you know, he he wore thirty, 
Um, but yeah, you, you got to sit back and you got to be like, damn, this person wearing my number. Are you going to be living up to you? We all think that. Come on. Yeah, I, I, I do. I, I think that too. Like, you know what? I didn't know what number I was going to get, but when I got it, I love that it was 21 because that's Deion Prime Sanders, right? But DeAndre Cobb was a dog. Right. Like, straight up dog. So when I got that, I was like, oh, man. First of all, I ain't as fast as DeAndre Cobb, but I need to be able to take this thing to another mm-hmm. level and uh, be on the defensive end. And then I got I got Mr. Tatum on uh, number 21 and – you know, you know, that's a good dude wearing it, man. He talked right, that talk right. and walked that walk. So, yeah, I agree with you, though. When somebody is terrible, like not terrible, you know, like just like, bro, what? <laughs> yeah. That's that's terrible. So, o- Otis, I'm going to I'm going to take hosting duty from you for a second here, because I think this is <laughs> Otis. You say, you know, you DeAndre Cobb wore number 30 and uh, number 21. And you're like, man, you know, I got to live up to it. Stray. You said Tony Mandrich was why you wore it. So, like, did you feel any like? added you know like when you came in with that number was there any added pressure or anything like that for me personally yeah no because i think you know i i was totally you know, we don't look alike at all <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to look alike you like, like, i'm about to like, like, just saying, like yeah. you know listen there's been there was 79s in between i i followed a brian demarco you know who um, you know, was a second round draft pick of the Jacksonville Jaguars, great player, but you know, it's not Tony Mandridge, right? So I had to wait a year. He was in his fifth year, he left, and then I was able to get the number that I originally agreed to. No, we didn't do all that like agreeing the numbers before we committed back in my day, but you know, Choo Choo started a trend that hasn't stopped. What number did you know, we, we need we need we need the fact checked on a, if Riley did really did reach out to Choo Choo. Oh, we're gonna oh, find really? out. All right, we're we we gonna find oh, we're gonna Lisa see, we're gonna <laughs> see. Lisa Byington. They did a story on it, but the like, day. but who, who somebody had to wear that before, but you don't know, right? Because, like, I don't was, know if anyone wore know. it before, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. He was the next prominent player, yeah. To wear, but what number did you guys wear in high school? I was 20. <laughs> yeah, I like that, Trevor. You're right, that's all I was worried about, man. I was 20, I was like, that was Barry Sanders, that's all I was worried about, number 20. <laughs> <laughs> Straight. Oh, what number yeah. were you in high school? Seventy nine. Okay, mm. you see. Yeah. You see, so it thing, wasn't. I, I, you know, I had a, I got thirty because of Terrell Davis, and then oh, yeah. TD. And then when I was in high school, I got number thirty tattooed on me. <laughs> so, oh, was, so you you couldn't fail. You needed this. <laughs> you needed this to work out. <laughs> <laughs> like please, oh, like please. <laughs> oh man, oh, did you get you, did you get thirty in the league every time? Um, no. When I went to the Jets, um, Drew Coleman was a DB. He had number thirty, and uh, so he came. I went up to him. I'm like, "Hey, Drew, man, you know, I had thirty in high school. I looked up to Terrell Davis. You know, can I? <laughs> like, I don't. I, get, <laughs> I was like, can't the whole get sad story." <laughs> Yeah, I was like, can I get number 30? He looked at me, he's like, all right, call we teammates. You're a rookie. I like you. But um, yeah, I'll give you 30 for 30 grand. I was like, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I knew that number was coming. Yeah, so that with the 49ers, 30 was retired. And then uh with the Bills, I got 30. So where it mattered. You know, <laughs> right, right, right. That's why I love the Bills. <laughs> See, we get the full story, guys. You know, Otis was out here on the West Coast, and especially event, and we want to get a chance to cover it. It was the Black Student Athlete Summit. Let's talk about that a little bit right now, if you can, Otis, and talk about your time there. Yeah, you know, one kudos to uh, Playfly, um, obviously the company that I'm a part of, and um, being the presenting sponsor of this, I think this is our second year um, of doing this. And so, you know, we fly out, I want to say not fly out, but we have about a thousand student athletes across the country that come. Um, and we actually had it last year was at Rice University. This year was at USC, which was one of our schools. Um, and then you have about almost 500 faculty staff um, and athletic representatives that come as well, because, you know, it's your DNI uh, directors or representatives. It's some of your development or your, you know, athletic uh, senior advisors, whatever the the case may be in their roles, they actually go with them. And so seeing our student athletes going 
and truly to like have a great time with other black student athletes. Um, it's, it's, it's a safe space. It's an opportunity for them to come and just gather a lot of information. You know, it was a lot of great sessions that we had. Um, you know, one of the Dr. Leonard Moore, who is um, at the University of Texas, created this about eight, uh, eight to nine years ago. And really to create a safe space for black student athletes to to have something for them, um, but also to just truly, you know, I want to I don't, I don't know if it's a mental health break or if it's uh, just to get some restoration or if it's empowerment, whatever the case may be. If you're able to really mingle with other student athletes that's going through the same journey uh, as you, you know, at a PWI, which is a predominantly white institution or any other university. It's just a great, great opportunity to have a good time. And so our guys uh, from the football, you had Jacoby Winman, you had Malik Carr, you had Trey Mosley. Those guys seem to be the kind of the guys that are consistently going and doing these, mm -hmm. these things. Um, and then you had um, Aaliyah, who's a volleyball player, Gabby um, from gymnastics. Um, and you had Olivia as well. And um, it was just a, and, oh, K-Mac, Kamaria McDaniel as well. Um, you know, it was just a great time to expose them to something that they probably would not get exposed to if they were just staying here on campus or going back to their to their home or their cities that they live in. And so the best part about the trip, though, uh, Stray and NJU, was going to our L.A. offices. Playfly has offices right in the parking lot where the Lakers have their practice facility. Um, and it was just an opportunity to just kind of break bread, have some lunch but just truly give them some, you know, some, some knowledge or put them on a free game basically um, is just to say, what are, what are your next steps in your career? Like, what are you going to do? What do you want to do really? Like everyone wants to tell them what they should, should do, but what do you want to do? Um, you know, you know, these student athletes are a different breed and have different age of student athlete. They have all the resources at their fingertips and they have every opportunity to be successful and so it was just a good opportunity to put some great speakers. Matt Barnes was probably my best, um, you know, session because he came in. And it was just real. Like it was a real like you ain't no script. Ain't no like you have some Q&A, but he relates to all our student athletes un to understand like he came from nothing and built a career in the NBA. And just to talk about his career, and what he's doing now, it just shows the student athletes that they can make it, too. So it was great, man. Great to be a part of. Yeah, a um, couple couple things, you know, to that, Otis. Uh, one, I want to give uh, kudos. Um, I think through all this here, you, Otis, don't get enough recognition for, you know, these types of things here. And, uh, you know, I know you did some stuff behind the scenes and everything like that, and you being a big part with Playfly and, you know, bringing that to Eastlands and running that and everything like that. You know, congratulations to you, man, for, you know, paving that way, you know, especially like people like us and you, these young guys that are going to these things like Malik Carr, um, Trey Mosley and, uh, you know, D uh, Dylan, he, he Tatum, he goes to a lot of these different things and everything like that. Like they can see someone like them, you know, in a role, you know, like you are there. So, you know, like that can't go on, you know, just like, Hey, you know, this was the thing there. You, help provide, you know, and pave that way there. And, you know, Darren Harris, you know, those guys there that are going to all these things. And um, the second thing, um, kudos to these guys for going to these things, you know, it, and, uh, you know, they, they're taking time out of their time, you know, Malik, Trey, Dylan, um, Jacoby, all those guys that go to all these different events, you know, out of taking time from that, they could be chilling at home, you know, barbecuing, you know, doing different things, but they're going to better themselves. And uh, I, I spoke to someone um, in the business world who was at that event in Detroit there. And, uh, you know, they were talking about how Trey Mosley connected with them and saying, you know, he, they had a conversation with him. This is a business owner, you know, that has a very big business and saying that their favorite, one of their favorite people was Trey Mosley. He came, he's like, Hey, you know, I'm going to, you know, if I play football at age, 
30 when I'm done, I still have to do something else when I'm when I'm done playing the game. And that person was so impressed with with these guys and the job that you guys do with them at Michigan State to expose them to these things is absolutely huge. And, you know, kudos to Michigan State University for allowing their student athletes to do part of these things. Kudos to the coaching staff. Kudos to the, you know, university for opening these doors for these because we you stray me. Um, myself and Otis, we were robbed of these opportunities. These opportunities were not there when we were student athletes. We didn't have the opportunities to have these doors open for us and everything like that. So, and I'm, I'm so glad that university can do it. Otis, I'm glad that you're embracing this and, you know, having more of it. And I'm glad that these student athletes are mature enough to step up to, you know, want to do these things. And it, it's, it's a lot um, on all on on all fronts there, and uh, I'm so proud to be a Spartan when I see stuff like this. Yeah, you know the best part too, like you know, Stray came out, and uh, we were able to see, um, you know, some some programming, and um, the one session that really President Carol Folt, like USC's president, you know, her coming out and giving her time, like she has other things to do, right? But if it wasn't for her, we wouldn't have been able to host, you know, at USC. And I'm talking USC's campus is beautiful, man. Like <laughs> the buildings, the historic things that you just the, the history you just felt when you stepped on there, you just felt like rich history. Right. Like and the, none of those student athletes would have been able to go to L.A., you know, on their no. own dime if it wasn't for this experience. It's getting them out of the comfort zone. Um, we're looking to hopefully, you know, have it in, in other spots. And, you know, one of these days we'll have it hosted at Michigan State. Uh, but it was just a great, great opportunity, man. Like it was just a lot of things that it was just excellence. It was this opportunity to just be amongst uh, a lot of different people that's doing the same journey, man. So I appreciate you giving me some flowers, man. But it wasn't just me, man. It was we had a team that was doing it, and you know I, this was one of those events. I kind of showed up, and you know I was part of some planning, but I showed up to do some te- some talking, and you know I was able to give them the I real saw you on stage. Yeah, yeah, but I was able to give them some real game, you know, like. Right. I started I, I started in my career, man, like the only one, you know what I'm saying? As a fundraiser, I was the only black African-American in fundraising. I didn't know fundraising existed when we were playing. I don't, I'm not sure you two, two or straight right. understood. And like not knowing these roles that are there afforded to us as you're playing, uh, I had to find out myself. And then I'm obviously in this multimedia right side, you know, Black representation truly matters because when you see someone that looks like you, you see that it's attainable, right? And so mm-hmm. shame on me if I'm not able to reach down or even reach across and say, hey, come on with me, right? And so that's just a good opportunity to be there, uh, looking to do bigger things next year. Um, so it was great that I was afforded the opportunity to go there as well on behalf of Playfly. So, boom. I see Harriet say she wants to be like me. When <laughs> Phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of people want to be like you, Otis. I mean, that, it is. I mean, I'm, I'm like, just blessed because I was able to see that with my own eyes, experience it. It was just a short time, a couple of hours down on USC's campus with you, man, and, and seeing, you know, I mean, that environment, like what you're saying, you know, the mental health. This, that was a special environment, and I mean, it was incredible. I, I've never been a part of something like that in my life. I've been a lot of places. I've been a few places, but not no place like that with that many representation, you know, representatives of the African-American culture from so many different schools all together, all in going in the same direction and having the same experiences. It, it was a beautiful thing to see. And, you know, I, I appreciate you appreciate Playfly, But, you know, we also appreciate Spartan Stadium. There is um, 100 years. There's a campaign coming up here now. This is 100 years of memories at Spartan Stadium. Um, check out this video. On the banks of the Red Cedar, there's a school that's known to all. Its specialty is winning. And those Spartans play good ball. And here come the Michigan State Spartans. A full house at Spartan Stadium tonight. And the boys get loud in here now. Yeah. Woo! 
That was nice, yo. How about that? Goosebumps. That's the first time. Yeah. Was, I mean, I saw like that video, but I didn't click on or watch it, especially with that noise or the sound in the background. Uh, I was trying to figure out who that voice was. I think that's Darvin, man. One of our <laughs> trying to see who that was, but right. man, you talk about quite Darian. the Eva, no Dar Darvin, Darvin. I know, no, no, no. Yeah. I know. I'm saying Harris, Darian Harris. I said not quite him, almost. Oh, it almost yeah. sounded like him a little no, bit. Yeah. Dar Darvin is the guy who's working with our our, our player development, but mm -hmm. um, just the moments, man, the moments in Spartan Stadium. Um, everyone has a uh, a special moment, their personal moment of when they experience Spartan Stadium for the first time. And I really want to know who's like the oldest season season ticket holder that's been there for the longest, right? That's still living. Like we got to find that out, you right? Know? One oh yeah, we can. We'll find them. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll put out. Yeah, yeah. They got to yeah, be yeah, like yeah. an honorary captain or something. Absolutely, for, oh, the first for sure. <laughs> yeah, I did propose that we bring back some honorary captains because that is an opportunity to showcase and play. You know, pay homage to the guys that you know did this before us, right? Bringing right. back the old guys and they obviously get to the current. Um, but I'm excited, man. We got some things cooking as we're truly going to celebrate. You know, the woodshed, you know, yeah. the Sparta Stadium and the evolution of what it became to be, man. It was good to see that video. Really good, man. You know, and, and talking about Spartan Stadium, we got more to talk about Spartan Stadium. And, you know, because there's been some controversy about games being played there or elsewhere. So, but before we go there, we have to talk about baseball, guys. <laughs> oh, he gave baseball. him the ball. You gave him that little hint. You gave him a little dang on the carry, like, oh, geez. oh yeah. hey, man, I just, I, I just want to, if I, you can hear me clap, Coach Boss, that those, those, those Spartans playing some good ball, man. They, they battled. I was nervous. I'm not gonna lie. I was nervous when they tied it up, and you know, it was bases loaded, and um, Rutgers, you know, that that's in state, that's an in home rivalry for us, so it's always good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't yeah. care what sport the Wiley it is. household. I don't care right, what sport right. it is, but check, check, check we good. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, man. You know, I mean, you know, they did. It was like four to four. I think you, that's what you're talking about. When yeah, it was tied yeah. up. Four. I, yeah. I had I, we, we had a we had a production meeting when that game was going on. And, yeah. uh, you know, I after the meeting, I jumped in my office. I was like, shit, turn that game on. We had golf going. We had the Charles Schwab open on. I was like, no, 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 no. Spartan Dogs are on TV. So <laughs> we put that on there. It was it was very cool to watch. Um, And, you know, I, I remember being, you know, at Michigan State when seeing the baseball, and they were like, you know, not very good at the time. And now seeing that change that's coming and seeing, you know, this now is very cool to see and you know they're the fastest team to 20 wins since you know in a long time you know i don't know if we have 20 wins since 2016 you know so that's a that's a lot of good stuff that's going on with these programs and a lot of good coaches you know that are coming in through all all out you know the sports and stuff like that you saw what coach nightingale's doing with the hockey team coach rose doing with the gymnastics team now the baseball team the softball team is really cool to see and it makes you really you know proud to be a spartan definitely absolutely I mean, man. coach boss stayed the course man he's been he's been just trying to get us to where you know prominence and a prominent program and and, and he's doing it with that not that much resources right like we talked about this from a Big Ten conference standpoint of our, our baseball uh, and our sports and our Big Ten schools is that how can we get to the SEC level of resources and, you know, facilities, but he's in the, what I guess the most important thing is our guys are having fun. When you watch the highlights and you watch, if you ever seen them play in person, they're having fun. And mm -hmm. when you're having fun and you're winning, man, there's nothing better, you know, better than that when you're winning with your boys. So, you know, one, Get that rest. Get ready for the next game. Uh, let's get another dub because we ain't finished yet. No, no question about it. Don't forget. Remember, we talked about this on a show not too long ago. Coach Jake Boss, he hired Adam Eaton. Now, Adam Eaton, mm -hmm. being on that staff along with him, it's like the yin and yang, man. And the guys really are buying in to the message given by Jake Boss. Um it, you know, it's different when you're with a guy that you know has been there at its highest level. It's different. It helps you psychologically and everything else. And so where the mind goes, body goes. Guys, there were some awards on baseball, too. Like, let's, let's, 
<laughs> okay, forget about that. Let me see the awards given. All Big Ten first team, Brock Vrandenberg. Hey, he had a big day today, man. He got that uh that uh in infield two two uh, base run, man, to kick it off for us to, to, to today's game. So uh White Rush, second team all Big Ten. I'm not gonna lie, this is it's been a while since I've seen guys truly get the accolades, you know, for this postseason. So that's when you know that absolutely we yes. have team success, right? When guys are truly getting the recognition that they, they deserve. So uh, you know, it's so many names that's on here that you know, right? It's it like take us know, a minute like, to, we, to, to to list out, but we're uh, gonna do a show on each good. one of you. Uh, we we want to do <laughs> <You're> a show, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> but we just. I mean, my goodness, this is. Man, uh, I just want one. I, I, I got to get me a uniform. I think I'm gonna wear a baseball uniform for football. I got to get me one because, like, they're just the smooth, the vintage Spartan. It's a smooth get up, yeah. man. Getting a jersey. You said uniform. We're everybody's, you know. Oh, kid. I thought you well, meant we uniform. Said. I thought you meant oh. the whole uniform. You're just going to walk around in the baseball. Oh. You, just meant the hey, you know what? I should. I should. <laughs> Dude, I should. Ahead. I should put, I should put, that would be very old. The fan tail grader of the game. <laughs> you, get, you get me a baseball uni. I want one of those boys. <laughs> hey, and you got to, and you got to tuck, and you got to tuck your jersey in tight for sure. Tuck it in what tight. About, <laughs> I forget about the, the baseball for it, man. What about men's tennis? Look. We got some doubles here. Update. I think uh, it looks like we the upset the number seed. one seed, baby. Yeah. Look at that. Max Sheldon and Ozan Baris. Man, I don't know if I, I – there's a different level to playing with no people watching. Like, like could you imagine – there's a lot of games, a lot of competition matches going on. If you look at that video, like, do you see anybody watching? Like, they truly got to rise up. And yeah, turn all the dads play. over to the left. Yeah, right, now, right. You got to, you got to, yeah, you got to hype yourself up. You got to be Absolutely. in that mode there. But you, yes. look, look, if you think about a couple of years ago, how do you think these football players felt when, you know, COVID? Oh, COVID you didn't have yeah. people in the stands. Nope. You know? Yeah, it was terrible. I mean, but that's what you got to do, man. If you, the value comes from being able to bring your own energy, can't be external, Otis. You know that, right? Uh oh, can't be uh -oh. external. <laughs> uh oh, Only, oh, it was that. That's you know, it's a it's a guard dog. You know, I don't know. What can I say? That's how he you know agreed with you. He, he agreed things. with you. <laughs> he hears things. <laughs> as I digress, as the you know garage door. That's what it is. Hey, listen, this is live. So what happens? Dogs bark, whatever. Ju wears a pink suit. Man, look, track and field update. Let's go there. Trevor Stevenson, pole vault. Man, I was talking to somebody. Said, "Hey, I was a pole vault, pole vaulter." I was like, "I got mad respect for anyone who does this this event. This is a lot of like courage. A lot of like, at one small mistake, one false move, it would take you down, right?" Yeah, and so we, we talked straight. I think you were. The show that you were out, we should had video of him doing that. And Stray and I were talking about that. That is that takes a lot of trust in that pool. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It oh, takes man. a lot of trust. Yeah. Man, All I know is I've never been a rate. pole you vaulter know. that wasn't a fun time to hang out with. That's all I'm gonna say. Those guys, they they know how to how to live on a different level. Cause it's hard to do, you know. Yeah, because they live in the air, right? That's how. Is that your pun intended? <laughs> I mean, is that what well, no, they pun intended? No, they, they, on the edge, because that that's that's yeah. adrenaline rush right there. If you if I ever seen anything like that, but you know, Dean Lockwood inducted into Step Up Assistant Coaches Hall of Fame. Man, have you ever met Dean in person, Stray Choo Choo? I have not. No, I haven't. Man, this dude, this dude is the absolute one of the most kindest, most humble man you would ever meet. And we are fortunate that he's still with us in being our player development um, with Coach Robin Freilich. Uh He's he's truly a leader, but he's also just a servant, too. And this is a good testament to his career and what he did, you know, has done in the coaching realm. Um, but it's also good that, you know, we, we're getting awards and our coaches are also elevating and all excelling in everything that they're doing. So congratulations, Coach Dean. Uh, great work getting into Hall of Fame. You know, step up assistant. You know, he's he's truly serving the head coach and he can I feel like he can go somewhere and be a head coach uh, at other schools. But, 
you know, that's not who he is. And so uh, it's good to, to, to keep him on our, our squad to be in the, in the green and white. Got to love him. Uh, listen, you know, I, I had not had the pleasure of meeting him, but it mean, sounds like, listen, I, I, those are the kind of people that you want to be. So set that up, please. Oh, next time yeah, I'm in yeah. town. We got you. All right. We got you. Yeah. I just need to talk to the guy, shake his hand for a minute. Going on, moving on. David Stone, this is a recruiting update from Michigan State. He comments on the Oklahoma Sooner message board here, fellas. Man, we already talked about this, man. Like, <laughs> uh, I can't even read it so small, to be honest with you. What did he say? Go ahead, read it. Man, look. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to look. There, there's, there's a lot of things. There's a, there's a, there's a lot of uh, – Oh, it's expletives not, okay. here. Yeah. Okay. See, this is this is where you get out of pocket. Like, so what happened was Gerald McCord, you know, like is is a friend of David Stone. He commits to uh, what was that? Oregon? Oregon. Yeah. He commits to Oregon, and people go crazy on the guy. And then David Stone jumped in and said, "This is sad," you know. But it, and which is. A trigger, I think, because people think he's going to go to Oklahoma. You know, but this is David Stone, who is five-star defensive lineman at IMG, who many thought that he was a, a lock for Michigan State. You know, since there's you know losing BT, Brandon Jordan, and Kevin Vickerson, all of a sudden it's like you know, oh, now it's wide open again for David Stone. So now it's a you know kind of a race to see who's going to get him because. Uh, that probably will take it all the way down to the wire that's in a 2024 class. But um, look, guys, this is he's, something. He's that, getting comments. He hasn't He hasn't even signed with them yet. Like He's getting those comments. So That's right. That, that's an automatic, like, decline. Are we good? Like, <laughs> look. Right. So, 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 wait. So, what you're saying is if you, if you heard that anybody in the fan base – talk to you in a certain way, you would not want to sign with the school in general just because the fan base, yeah, somebody made something right yeah, in the comments or said something. Excuse me. I mean, look, I'm, I'm glad and fortunate that we didn't have social media or like this as much because like I didn't have to read all that. I actually, honestly wouldn't care, but, you know, that is – that's it, it matters. You know, it truly matters when you have people that talk that way and they're affiliated with the fan base. Um and it just validates, like, all right, I'll make my decision easier. It makes my decision easier. I'll go over to go out west and go to Oregon. Um, I mean, we already talked about him. Like, we obviously wanted to be in the green and white, but I saw that's what Choo Choo was kind of scraping his cheek, cheek for. Like, <laughs> like we wasted – not say we wasting our time, but, like, the man still has to make his own decision, and we shouldn't be out here talking reckless and out of pocket because he makes a decision that he thinks is best for him. That's it. I'm I'm hearing pe the people want to hear from Choo Choo. Oh, he's been quiet. Set these Choo, boys what's straight. What's your opinion on this, Steve? What does that even mean, Steve Smith? <laughs> what does it mean? Set the boys I just, straight. My my opinion on it is this: like I think um, David Stone is in it for David Stone, and you know his high school um, accolades earn him the right to do that. You know, he's a highly recruited guy. But I'm sick of talking about David Stone, to be 100% honest. I want to talk about him if he says, I'm going to Michigan State, and he signs with Michigan State, and he comes here and puts on the green and white. That's when I want to talk about David Stone. I don't want to – David Stone is doing all these things so David Stone can be talked about. So I don't want to talk about David Stone until David Stone's wearing the green and white. I don't know because <laughs> you was talking heavy when he when he started coming here, like when he was visiting, and making those trips. He was talking, he was talking good, and now yeah, it was because he, he playing with hey, he playing with your heart. That's what he is. <laughs> That's a, what, who, 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 who you said that? With so we said that you played with your it, mind. Just, That's yeah, what it, 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 who, who said being that? Emotionally uh, played with. This is what it is. is Backstreet Boys are in sync. Said, "Quit playing games with my heart." Yeah. You know, is that what whoever, it is? That girl, whoever that girl yeah. he was dating, you know, in these lanes, and he kept coming here all the time. But 
you know, at the end of the day, is if he's not going to be a spark, I'm not going to waste my time talking about you know someone that's not going to be go to war with us. You know, like I, there's Tyrell Dorch, you know, a running back when I came here. We, before we went out, he said, "Y'all ready to go to war?" And everyone said, "Let's go." Everyone that said "Let's go" was wearing that green and white. I want someone that comes here. I want to go to war with us. Someone that wants to be, you know. So at the end of the day. If he's not if he's not going to war with us and helping us win and and win a national title, win a Big Ten title, why do I need to talk about him? I love it. I, I mean, listen, we got we got some like great comments going on in the chats. I gotta I gotta give credit where credits due. Put the one with the stone unturned. Jude <laughs> said he's leaving some stones unturned. How witty was that? Mm-hmm. that that's that's excellent because. Yeah, man. Hey, man, look. You're right. He's a high school kid, and he has a uh, man. How much, how much time we got left till he makes the decision? Like, I, he's gonna milk this. He's gonna milk it. Like, it's yeah. It's the, like I, it, no, it no. Like, sooner, I mean, it's gonna be December whenever they sign. Yeah, December like, 21st yeah. was last year. It's gonna be you know. He gonna he gonna take all these schools for all their money. All these boosters gonna fly <laughs> him out, and he gonna hey, the, work and, him and I know this is uh this is later down in the show, but it's all in the rules to do what he's doing, dog. Like it, it is, is yeah. it is, yeah. So it, it is all in the rules. I rather I rather him do this versus commit and flip us. To be completely honest. That's what I'm saying. Commitment doesn't mean anything now. Well, I'm saying, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it is what it, it is. Let them do that. It's like that girl that told you, I yeah, commit to you, yeah. and you, and you, yeah. and you, I'm and you. Too. With you. I'm going to problem with you. And then a better offer comes along. You know, right. someone say, hey, we get in a limo. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> ain't, ain't no better offer. Limo, ain't, ain't, ain't no, true. Ain't no better offer than this is part of MSU. That's so click the like and subscribe button. Don't forget to do that. Helps us. It really does help us. And listen, we got to talk about a lot of those topics that you've just been teasing after this message from our friends over at IHOP. When you're smiling. Introducing IHOP's new Eggs Benedicts. When you take a poached egg, add it to a crispy English muffin, fire-roasted poblano peppers, and shredded beef with our rich and buttery hollandaise sauce. You don't just get our handcrafted new Eggs Benedicts on your plate. You get a smile on your plate. New Eggs Benedicts in four delicious flavors, only from IHOP. Guys, you know, when I came off the field on my senior day, I think I had about, I don't know, 38,000 fans against Illinois. It wasn't Penn State because we had to go on the road. Listen, like, I've seen some great final games at Spartan Stadium and the population in there, that attendance, you know, I don't know about ticket sales versus attendance, but guys, there's been a lot of controversy because Michigan State and Penn State have agreed in principle to move the game that was going to be scheduled in Spartan Stadium to Friday on Black Friday, November 24th on the Peacock Network and lose, essentially give up the home game uh, in order to go to downtown Detroit. Tick, season ticket holders will be refunded that game, and they'll have to be on their own on that particular game. Guys, so here's the situation right here. Let's set the table. We've what been here. I color, mean, what color like this, talk, what, talk to me, what, man. No, I'm saying, what color is the table? Is it red table talk? Is it black? Which What color is it? Green? What is it? <laughs> Green table talk. The green table talk. Okay. Green, green, green table talk. That's it. You know, so let's, let's play ball. What do you guys think about this? I, there's been a ton of talk about, listen. You oh, know, Harriet. Harriet. Here we go. What's Harriet saying? What did Harriet say? Woo, woo. Let's go let's to D. Let's go to D. Okay. She, so Harriet wasn't on Twitter. Let me see. Who else? Was anybody else? Because, I mean, Twitter almost blew up. Yesterday when the news came out, guys. <laughs> so <laughs> how, you go go first. You go first. <laughs> all right. So this is this is my take on it, and uh, I am absolutely unapolog- unapologetically excited about this news. I think it's something that's you know it's going to be great. 
And I want, you know, for everyone that's like, oh, my God, Michigan State's going to lose a home game. Yeah, we're going to lose a home game. Yes, I get it. But we're going to we're going to have a home atmosphere at Ford Field. We're going to be warm at Ford Field. We're going to have an opportunity to come to Ford Field. Some of these kids, you know, that were in-state kids, when they played in high school, they dreamed about playing a state title game at Ford Field. Some of them played in a state title game at Ford Field. Now they come to Michigan State they have the opportunity to go to Ford Field and play this game. And for all the people that are like, oh, we're losing a home game, we're losing – this is nothing new in college football, people. This is absolutely nothing new. On October 28th, University of Georgia is going to play University of Florida in Jacksonville. All right? University of Florida is going to be the home – they're losing – they only have six home games. All right? And – to, to Florida fans, it's nothing. They're like, yeah, we're going to go out. We're going to show out. We're going to show up and we're going to show out for our team. That's what Spartan Nation needs to do. All right? I've talked to coaches, people on the coaching staff. I've talked to people in the administration side of things. And more importantly, I've talked to players, current MSU players that will be playing in this game. They are excited about the fact that they get to be showcased on prime time in Detroit, in Ford Field, in an NFL stadium, they get to showcase the, the, their talents to the world on primetime on NBC on Friday night. Friday night lights again for these guys. All right. So I don't I don't understand why there's any of the the slander behind it and everything like that. The only thing that I get, yes, I get the season ticket holders lose that game. They're getting refunds on that, and they're going to be the first in line to get new tickets. I think you're going to get more people coming to this game than there would be going to East Lansing. If you're if you're uh, Detroit, Metro Detroit area, 100,000 uh, Spartan alums live in the surrounding Metro Detroit area. Think about people coming from Chicago to visit their families. This this is an opportunity for them to go to the game. A lot of the people that are complaining are people that wouldn't go to the game in East Lansing anyways because they'll say it's too cold or, oh, the season may not be what we want it to be. This is that. But, no, at the end of the day, this is something – this is the new norm of college football. When you have big money come to college football and you want to be the first – to do something? Why do you think Michigan State played on an aircraft carrier? Why do you think they were the first ones to play in the in the Cold War in a hockey game in Spartan Stadium? Why were we the first one to play a basketball game in a football arena? Because we weren't scared to take these risks. We weren't, you know, sitting back like clutching our pearls, saying, "Oh no, why, why, why us? Why us?" And being a victim, we embraced it. Because this is going to be the new norm. Five years from now, when every single game after Thanksgiving is played at a stadium, I see probably Minnesota playing at where the Vikings play. It's the U.S. Bank Stadium, you know, playing a game there on Thanksgiving. I see that as well. And we will be the transsetters. We will be the ones. And for the fans that are complaining about it, think about the kids. They're the ones that are excited about this. How many opportunities will you get? To play in an NFL stadium. Not everyone's going to play in an NFL. That's your dream to play in an NFL stadium. And now these kids get that. They get that opportunity. And I don't care if I'm a player, I want to be warm, I want to be loose, and I want to be the best me I can be. And playing at Ford Field is going to afford them the opportunity to. Love it. Elders, you sitting back. I got a little right now, brother. He said he just, it all. Like, right. I'm, hey, he gave me that. Uh, he, just, he, just, he just like put it on, like blazed it right there. Chew, like, you just you're trying to drop that the boy, mic hey. on us? Hey, that man said, wow, wow. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, listen, I don't care where we play, I just want to win. Like, I don't care if it's outside, indoor. It could be whatever. I just want to win. And I think this opportunity is that Detroit Southeast Spartans, Southeast Michigan, Detroit Spartans is a strong, strong, strong alumni base. Um, and it's just an opportunity for, you know, fans to enjoy it uh, with comfort. Um, and But I think the positive standpoint is that we're giving like ec economic value to Detroit, which we're trying to help. Uh, rebrand and build that up. And so with painting the, painting the town green and white, 
um, I'm all for it. Um, and I don't think that we should even worry, not say worry about, but we're not worrying about the naysayers and they talk, they're talking about, you know, hosting this East Lansing. I mean, look, I was freezing <laughs> in the Indiana game and it wasn't even as cold, but we all had uh, the opportunity to play that last home game on Sear Day against Penn State. And I, I remember and recall the first two years and two, you was on this team where they came in and beat us and won the Big Ten and went to the Rose Bowl. And I was like the most most worst feeling I had in my career. But then on the flip side, we ended up beating them and going to our, getting our first bowl bid, which I can you know re replay right. that like, like it was yesterday, running around like we, got, we we're going to Disneyland or something, right? Um, these kids, like Trey Mosley said it best. He's like, last time I played in Fort Field, it was the state championship game and we lost three to two. I'm looking, I'm looking to redeem myself. And that's right. just what you talked about local kids being able to play in four field. I almost got to four field. I still regret it. Still think about it. Um, but it's just an opportunity to have them go out there and play in that, um, in that event. And so also Penn state is for the other fan, other student athletes coming to Detroit market. Um, and getting able to play inside because when we went there and played, it was cold too. Um, so I just think it's an opportunity from just it's different and different, a different being different is going to come with some resistance, but we just got to push through and we, we're known to do the unthinkable. And I'm glad that we took the stance in doing this. Uh, and now it's just putting the logistics together um, and putting a good event together where we're going to have some great stuff pregame. Just know that it's going to be fire. Um, we'll roll that out once it gets done and you all will be invited, but we're looking forward to it. Yeah. And, uh, to, to add to that too, um, how great is this for Michigan state? If you're a recruit coming from IMG, you know, for that, because your seasons are wrapping up, you're a recruit coming from New York, you get to, you know, like, okay, if I come to Michigan state, these are the possibilities i can play a game here i can play a game you know at home in front of seventy five thousand people i can do this i can do you know that's a great recruiting piece and you have the opportunity to showcase everything on that national spotlight there is a reason there is a reason why the networks reached out to the big 10 and said hey can we have michigan state and penn state on this game you know, there's that tradition with Michigan State, Penn State. It's a rivalry game. I, people want to say it's a secondary rivalry game. To the players, it's a first-day rivalry game. You want to win that game. You want to win that land-grant trophy. You know, there's only two land-grant schools in the Big Ten, right? You want to win that game. You want that. It's not a secondary. To the fans, it may be a secondary. And that's why this game's moving because, like, and, and as a player, and, and how devastating is it to be in there and you look around and you see an empty stadium. You see, it might not be totally empty, but you see these big patches. You see the upper bowl, it's, it's, it's uh, empty. You see the student sections empty, all right? So for all the people that are complaining, oh, you know, we need this game, we need this game. Think about the players, all right? How devastating is that? But when you can take this and move it to somewhere else where the, the fans will be comfortable, they'll be, you know, having a good time, you know, you will draw different people to that game that wouldn't naturally be going to making that trip to East Lansing the day after Thanksgiving. Now you're going to get these more people coming to the city, go, going in and, and cheering on their Spartans. There's a reason why the networks wanted to do this, because Michigan State has set the bar for these different types of games throughout their their tenure. You know, look. I mean, those are, I mean, outstanding points. It is what it is. It, it's it's true that NBC, you know, paid a lot of money for a reason. I, and and listen, I, I mean, I think this is all crazy talk, in my opinion, because, you know, even I can remember it wasn't too long ago, Michigan State was playing in a Final Four in downtown Detroit. I think, I think they played against North Carolina. I don't remember the year because this is – just came to me, but you know what? 2008, just, um, 2008, yeah, right? 2008. There we go. Yeah, because I, I keep hearing this this idea that oh, you know, you can't, we can't do this, we can't give up the home games, and it won't be a good atmosphere. It's going to kill. There's a lot of Spartans, like you know, you guys just said in the Metro Detroit area. There's Spartans. Every, we're talk. We're not talking about a huge distance here. We're talking about an NFL stadium 
and the environment is just a great environment. But that moment, and I'm going back to this Final Four in 2008 against North Carolina, that was probably the best, the greatest environment I've ever had my experience in my life with Michigan State being within the, the city of Detroit. You know, and and probably, you know, because I don't get a chance to do a lot of the tailgate and all those things like that in Spartan Stadium. Like, it was pretty damn cool. It was. And I think that being able to take the team and have a game of this value with a land grant trophy on the line, something that, you know, it right now is not considered a, a first tier rivalry. Let's just call it what it is. So, you know, to be able to put this on a stage where people say, you know what, look, Thanksgiving was, you know, we had the, the biggest bar night on Wednesday. Thanksgiving was yesterday. Today, what are we going to do? Let's go downtown, watch the Spartans. Like, what's wrong with that? So I would watch it. That, huh? that that whole moniker of it's not, uh, uh, it's a second tier rivalry game. I, I call BS on that. You talk to a player, we played that game, and it was not a second tier to us. So, absolutely all fans, not. All the fans absolutely that are not. saying, this is a second tier thing, or it's like that. You haven't put that work in. You haven't put that blood, sweat, and tears into it for an opportunity like that. The, well, the, straight, the you had a good point. You had a good point that our NCAA national championships, Final Fours, are played in every football stadium, NFL stadium. So yeah. if college basketball can go and put that high rise court. And small court in a big, <laughs> big arena or stadium, and still have a great time. We can do the same for football, which is supposed to be meant for it. But to your point, I it, I love this. I love playing against Penn State. Obviously, almost at with the the team down the road because we knew it was a blood battle, bro. Like it was mm -hmm. a mono e mono. We knocking each other out. And, you know, at the end of that game, we knew that we we went out with a fight. And I know that I never ra raised that trophy because that trophy's huge. So that trophy's <laughs> heavy. That trophy's that heavy, trophy's but, heavy. but Look, we had an opportunity to do that. Bro, like the only – when, you know, going back in my days of recruitment, the only time I had seen Michigan State play was like a, a John Hancock Bowl, Sun Bowl, mm. Michigan game, Penn State game. That's it. That's all I knew. I, I didn't know about any of like because those are the shows. Those are the games. You know, remember, see, these are the days when you, you know, you just because you played a game, you aren't on TV. Even in the Power Five, there was several Big Ten games that weren't weren't on television. So mm -hmm. <laughs> if you weren't there, you didn't see them. That's not the way it is today because the popularity of the sport. That's what we're talking about here. Like, this is a good thing. Michigan State embraces this, and and Penn State does something cool, like maybe going to the Lincoln, you know, the link over there, or going to Acrisure, I believe it is now. It used to be Heinz Field, Acrisure Field. Greg Williams, we got to have you on this show too. <laughs> That's what we got to. If if we if there's some kind of rotation there, man. I mean, it would be beautiful. I I think yeah, but that's outdoor. Though tool. I think the, it's the indoor elements. There's no there's no it, there's no in venue or those indoor. They don't have that. Those bar, so, right? They don't have it over there. So, so my my question my, my my question to you guys is this. All right, now from we all all three of us agree that we think this is good. You know, for the university, it is good for the conference. Is good. so. What what do, what do you say to those people that say, "Oh well, uh, Penn State would not give up a home game. Michigan would not give up a home game. Ohio State would not give up a home game for an opportunity like this." Like, and I even read an article that's saying Michigan State is succeeding and saying that they're a mediocre program because they're given, you know, giving up a home game for this. What? What say you to this? What say you? <laughs> I think that's all trash talk. Yeah, be honest with you. I think it's they obviously have given up home games because they played non-conference games in big spaces like the AT and T Jerry's World Stadium. You know that team down the road. Like they played Wisconsin, going and played down somewhere. They gave up home games. Northwestern you know, played in North Ireland West, last year. Actually, yeah, exactly. So. There's, there's, yeah. <laughs> it's just it's just smoke, man. I think I think it's all smoke and mirrors. And at the end of the day, we just need to win, and it'll be a great game at the end of the season. 
Um, and our players will be able to go up and have a great grand old time in Detroit, put on for the city. That is prime time time television after Black after Black Friday at night. There's nothing better than that. So all those all those big TVs, everyone fighting over, they'll set it up. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, long, and as long as the Lions win Thursday and then we win Friday, we good, baby. It's good. Hey, right, that's a hell of a weekend right there. <laughs> Well, mind you, yeah. Thursday we play Acre Short Classic, Arizona on the West Coast. So there's a lot of events happening where we're gonna have some people flying over, uh, just like we did the Carrier Classic going over to the home game. It's gonna be a good Spartan events on TV. And and let's not get like I doing sideline, I'd rather be at <laughs> four. <laughs> For your personal selfish reasons, <laughs> absolutely. <right? laughs> I'd rather be. And that boy be like, hey, <laughs> hey, that boy, hey, straight. He'd be like, hey, back to you, George. <laughs> hey, the, the bad part is all three of us have had that job. All three of us. Man. Right. And you and know listen, exactly what we talk about. I hear listen. snot froze. You out here like, <laughs> you out here doing this. Like, <laughs> Frozen boogers in there, like good lord. The word, like, right. They be like, "Hey, you got something for me?" <laughs> no, it's cold. <laughs> oh, I'm standing by this heater, uh, watching Dino Felino's uh, snowsuit get fired up and going to flames on the sideline. Like, oh god! I mean, what? you guys are crazy. Man. <laughs> well, I, I gotta give a shout out though because Mr. Nick gave he gave. I called Mr. Nick, talked to him last week. And he he said he wanted me and Choo Choo Stray to come out here and hang out with him. And all he wants to do is listen to those stories back in the day. I was like, we got them for you, boys. So I got to get Mr. Nick. Yeah, because Mr. Nick has had some good stories in the code where he's going to tell me, he's like, he basically tapped me on the show. He's like, look at Coach Felino as it's burning. <laughs> Not going to help him. He's like, Otis, look at Coach Felino. <laughs> That's crazy, oh, man. Man, look, we guess like okay, I, I, look, I'm all for every. We're all for you know moving this game and doing doing what we need to do. I think for the betterment, we just got to get used to it, everybody. I, that, that's all I think. And you know, guys, college football in 2023. That's what it is. That's <laughs> what it is. And, and speaking of college football in 2023, you know, we have a, a Big Ten president here right now, Ted Carter at the. President of Nebraska says, I think Big Ten football through the chancellor's presidents has made a decision to try to be national. I applaud the move for Nebraska to show our brand in California. It's a valuable thing. When and if we go to play in the Rose Bowl, we're going to get the exposure in California. We're going to inspire some of those athletes to come to Nebraska. That's one of the reasons that I wanted to see expansion for our league and to have national exposure four time zones is fantastic guys. Like, listen, like when we talk about a, a situation like this, where you have a chance. So now he's just talking in general terms here, but in this particular article that is from Husker extra.com, I mean, they go into detail and say like, listen, this, this is something that it hasn't even been began to get to the bottom when you're talking about the expansion of the Big Ten right now. Guys, like Otis, you you know a lot of things that are going on, and I, I don't want you to divulge your sources or any kind of crazy information. But <laughs> when you hear something like this, what does it make you think? Sources, right? Um, <laughs> no, I, I there's a lot of – uh, Big Ten alums living in LA. And if I talked to one of my colleagues in the LA office and I asked a simple question, this is more so on the, on the business side of it because they sell the media, they sell the regional network in LA. And I asked, okay, how's the expansion going to impact the regional sports networks? And she immediately was like, it's going to be great. Now, the one thing is, is how the Pac-12 is going to you know, rebound with those two uh, prominent institutions leaving the conference. But we have majority Big Ten alums working in this office, and they're excited to 
at every other year, one of their teams is going to come out to California and play in L.A. Um, I think it exposes all of our student athletes and future student athletes to the entire nation when it comes to the Big Ten's footprint and where they're located in our schools. Um, but also, let's, t- let's just talk about the institution, period. These are prominent institutions that put Big Ten conference at the elite, most elite. You got UCLA and USC, which is our prominent universities institutions, and it's going to open up the floodgates for other student athletes that are looking to play. You know, I'm from L.A., but I I can go to another school and I know that I'm going to be able to come back home and play in front of my fan, my friends, my family. Um, That just opened up the floodgates uh, for everyone in the conference to 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 maximize. So I think it's great. Um, And I also forgot what your question was, but, you know, from my standpoint, (laughs) um, I just I think it's going to be a good thing for us now. This is the this is the one thing people don't understand. It's the travel piece of it. Like everyone that is coaching and talk about the traveling and the itineraries of like, how are we truly going to manage the, mm-hmm. the, the travel and the management, time management for student athletes of you're going to have to do tours. Like you're going to have like, let's take basketball. Let's take soccer, for instance. They go play outside out at USC one day and wait, stay there and play them, you know, a few days later so that they take advantage of being out there versus going back and forth and school, you know, attending school. There's just a lot of things that's going to trickle down to the other sports of like, how are they going to manage and budgets and resources? How is that going to help? And how is that going to be affected? So there's a gift, there's curses, but the media and the network and the buy up, you know, the money that we're getting from the networks uh, is, is tremendous. And I think it's just a big, big, big boss move uh, that I think is going to be great. At, after we get accustomed to getting it smoothed out after that first year. But remember when Nebraska came in, remember Rutgers and Maryland came in and how, you know, it took a year or two to kind of get acclimated, three years to get acclimated to the Big Ten. But now everyone was barking and complaining about, you know, Maryland and Rutgers coming in into the Big Ten. But now it, it seems perfect because that New York and that East Coast network and the fan base there has been embraced. And now – you don't even think about it no more. So I think it's going to take some time, but it's all good, all good for the for the conference. Guys, I, I think that, you know, what we're experiencing right now in our own world, the Spartan Nation with this night game popping up on, was it Black Friday? Black Friday night game? They're getting us used to this night game because, listen, they're going to be coast-to-coast games happening and, you know, yeah, there's the big noon kickoffs and things like that. But I mean, you're not going to see a team like USC go play Michigan and then kick off at, at noon at Eastern. That, that's not going to happen. They're not going to that, – that's, that's 9 a.m. For, for those at USC, for people who are keeping score. So that, that won't be the, the thing. They, they will like to bring these games to more prime time on different networks because these guys are all joined together anyway in some capacity. So whatever they do, here's here's right here the Power Five television contract review, fellas. We got the ACC. You know they're they're in this deal till 2036 at 17 million. SEC till 34, 51 million. Look look at the Big Ten there with you know, with, an, I mean, with an unsigned contract. Well, yeah. Listen, <laughs> and, and what they say this gonna get bigger. It's gonna get bigger. I didn't want to put. I didn't want to be the bear back. It was be like a it's Debbie Downer. Hey, yeah. hey, so, so look, 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 at look, at looking at this. Look at looking at this, Stray. Looking at this, uh, Otis. You see all these things here. No wonder you see all those schools trying to leave the ACC. I that seventeen million. That's got to be split between all those schools and the Pac twelve. No wonder Washington wants to join the Big Ten. No wonder um, what's the other uh, school out there. Um, Oregon wants to join the Big Ten. Like 20 mil split between that each school in the Big Ten's getting 20 mil each. Now these people have to split that. Like, no wonder that that's uh what's happening there. Hey, hey too. This no, is the like average. 70, this that's is the average this per is school. the average per school per oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 that's even look, that's even better, right? But it's even bigger. It's, even it's, it's, it's even like better. 71, it's like 71, almost 80 million per year. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So look, look, no wonder those schools want to come to the Big Ten there. So 
that's what's going to happen. And uh, for everyone, all the traditionalists and the purists, don't get me wrong. I'm one of those people. Like, I love the college game being pure. I love the, the tradition of college football. But it's either you you got to you move with the times or you're going to be left clutching your pearls. You're going to be back there saying, oh, get off. My, you're going to be that guy. Get off my lawn. Or I remember <laughs> when, you know, a newspaper cost 75 cents. That's not what it is anymore. So let's get with the times. Let's let's be the front runners. Let's be the, the ones that are the pace setters, you know, in the conference. So let's embrace these things. If they say we're playing a game at Ford Field, hell yeah, let's go sell out Ford Field. Let's be Spartan Nation there. If they say we're playing a game at, at a SoFi Stadium, we're playing USC at SoFi yeah. Stadium, let's get out there and do it. There's no need to. They got great weather. So Coliseum is baller. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. I mean, yeah, it is too. It's terrible. It's terrible, but well, it's so fine than the Coliseum. All right, Big facts. Cool. Yeah, you got yeah. that. Yeah. So fine. I mean, that's a pretty, pretty nice facility. I mean, so I guess the consensus is that you know, like we we just uh, you know, the conference expansion is welcomed. You know, are we done yet, guys? Is this something that you know? I hope I hope Notre Dame just get left out. I hope they you, leave you so game so. What what do you guys see? The, how do you how do you see this playing out? Like, put your five year you know genie goggles on right now, Ju, and tell us where you see the the different conferences going in five years from today. I see uh, two power conferences. I see the SEC and the Big Ten. I see uh, a North division and a South division. Um, for college football. And uh, I think like everyone, you know, except, you know, out in California, the um, um, USC, UCLA, those guys will be up there. But um, I think like you're going to see the Oregon's come to big, the Big Ten. You're going to see Washington's come to the Big Ten. Um, nobody wants Oregon State. No, You know, like nobody wants, you know, those, <laughs> like, Damn, who, <laughs> who wants to go to Corvallis? and play a game it's, it's always <laughs> foggy there you know who wants to go to wake forest and play a game you know no one wants to do those so those people they'll get mixed in somewhere else and they'll be happy with where they are but um i think it's going to be that 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 those two power conferences there and then i think you're going to see a um broken down into different divisions kind of like the nfl you're going to have the big 10 east big 10 north big 10 south big 10 west and then you're going to have like that type of playoffs for college football man i mean you just i, I, I can see the vision there yeah, i, the vision. I can see the vision where where are your pearls because you said clutch your pearls a couple times tonight so i'm trying to figure out where your pearls are at you know, it's those things when they were like, ooh, uh, the pearls. <laughs> <laughs> Our listeners know what I'm talking about. What, what, say that one more time, too. I don't know if everybody heard you. Ooh, you got to do what? The <laughs> <laughs> He's a Listen, I mean, it's, Harriet, is the bus going to be in Detroit for Ford Field? Is the bus going to? Is the bus making the trip, Harriet? <laughs> right. Talk to us, Harriet. It's the bus. Not the clutch pearls, <laughs> Raven. Hey, listen, gotta love Raven. Listen, guys. I mean, Otis, talk to us, man. Give us some final comments before we put a ball on this thing. Listen, this is great, great show tonight. Um, you know, talking about a lot of things, but also this is a show where you're able to tune in and and just you know, talk it, talk it real, and, and talk about what's happening in athletics. But you know, with Michigan State, uh, at the end of the day, I just want to win. So I don't care what happens, <laughs> I don't care what's going on. I just want to get back to that winning column, and we went in the right way. And so, um, tune in. We got more news happening, but good show, fellas. I appreciate it. Oh, you know, two. Talk to us. Yeah, you know, Otis hit it on the head. You know, we can play in the Meyer parking lot. We can play wherever. You know, we just want to win the game. And uh, at the end of the day, we always forget, you know, you know, as fans, we want to be, you know, our experience and everything like that. We forget, you know, these kids are the ones that are sacrificing. These kids are the ones that are, you know, going through 
off-season workouts, off-season conditioning and everything like that. Let them have the experience. We can be there to cheer them on. Let them, you know, have these, you know, like these experiences by going to L.A. Let them have the experience of playing in different environments, different, you know, um, areas. And these kids, are, and we want, we as fans and we as former players, we want to grow the game. You know, if, if this is going to make another kid, you know, tune into football because it's on, on Friday night on NBC – and see, oh, man, I like what I'm watching. You know, maybe I want to play the game of football. That's going to grow the game of football for us. And this game that we all love, that we all gave our blood, sweat, and tears to. If this is going to grow it, if it means playing on a Friday night, you know, an hour and a half down the road, let's do that to grow the game. Because we all love this game and we want to continue to grow this game for, you know, future generations. So let's let's do that and let's elevate our schools and, um, you know, to the people, the 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 uh this is sparta msu army appreciate you guys week every tuesdays and thursdays joining us uh, i can't do it without it and i love the fact episode 79 the jason strayhorn episode <laughs> man listen to you, you gotta you know you, you're too kind that's all i can say about you you know i mean i appreciate you guys you know it's a good show you know, absolutely. Anybody that's out there, you know, don't forget to click that like and subscribe buttons. Yeah, you, know, you know, we love being here twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays with you guys. Just bringing what's happening and just just being able to spend some time with everybody. It's like therapy. I love that. Thank you, Donald Person. Best pot out, boys. Good time, baby. How about and that? We ain't gonna sure. We ain't gonna sugarcoat it too. We gonna tell it like it is. We got. As, yeah. as a T.I. is. Yeah. You know, yeah. Collect some pearls and yeah. tell it like it is. Yes, you do. Yes, Lord. Thank you. I appreciate you, Vince. You know, thank you. You know, guys, you know, for all of us on board, don't forget about, you know, listen, we know that the guys do the show here, but there's there's a lot of people in the background doing a lot of great work that, you know, producer Pete, you know, Tony G and Tony O, known as the OG Tonys. They're back there. They're doing their thing. And, you know, little man do revise. And listen, there's a lot of people. You know, Alicia uh, obviously helping us out, too, doing a phenomenal job. And uh, everyone. Boss lady. For Otis Wiley and J.U. Culprit, I'm Jason Strayhorn. This is Sparta. Have a good night. God bless you. And go green. Go white. Go white. This is Sparta MSU as a combined presentation of Playfly Sports Properties and Michigan State Sports Properties. The show is produced by Pete Menez with additional support from Tony Costella. Operations and social media support is provided by Alicia Strayhorn with support from Cecily Max Brown. On location technical support is provided by Good Fruit Video. Be sure to follow our hosts, Jason Strayhorn, J.U. Kulkrick, and Otis Wiley on social media. To stay up to date with all the latest, this is Sparta News. Please like and subscribe by visiting our link tree and tell a friend to do the same. Thank you for your support, and as always, go green.